the Children's Museum of Green Bay, and today we are frogging with Barkhausen. So I'm going to throw it over to Jason at Barkhausen to show us all about their really cool bullfrog and learn about it, and then meet us back here afterwards to learn how to make your own frog craft. Take it away, Jason. The Barkhausen Nature Bites. Today we're talking about this guy, Bubba, our bullfrog, who lives here at Barkhausen in our nature center. So Bubba is a bullfrog, and bullfrogs are native of North America. They actually are our largest frog. Bubba isn't actually from Wisconsin, though. Bubba is actually from California. We got them shipped over here many years ago, and they have ponds over there where they breed bullfrogs for nature centers and schools. We didn't want to take one of the bullfrogs in the wild out here at Barkhausen, because we do have bullfrogs out here in our ponds, and sometimes between mid-May to July, when they're starting to breed, you're going to hear their call. It's like a barum, a barum, a barum, right? Yeah, he'll go with that. So bullfrogs, again, are native to Wisconsin. Um, you might have heard of them called bismaroons, especially up by O'Connell and Pashtunga area. They'll sometimes call them bismaroons. And they like large wetlands, especially the ones behind me. Those kind of float around in there, waiting for things, anything basically that fits in their mouth, they're going to gobble it up. So it could be all the frogs, it could be fish, insects, baby birds if one gets a little too close. Anything that can fit in their mouth, they're going to grab for sure. So what's going to happen in mid, about mid-May to about July, they're going to be calling and breeding. The female bullfrog will lay about 10 to 20,000 eggs, and the eggs will hatch after, after about four days. And then tadpoles, when they're swimming around, it's going to take a year to two years for them to actually develop into a bullfrog. So they're not going to turn to a frog that year likely. What's going to happen is they're going to overwinter, they're going to hibernate as a tadpole, and then the following spring they might turn into an adult frog or maybe take one more year. Depends on those eggs were laid. So if you ever see tadpoles early in the spring, they could be from a green frog. Green frogs also do this. It'll take one year usually, or it could be from a bullfrog. And on the note, green frogs, these are obviously, bullfrogs are very green, but if you're curious what's the difference between a green frog and a bullfrog, other than the size, one big key thing to look for is right by the eardrum, they're right there, the circle right by my finger's pointing, there's a ridge of skin. We call that a dorsal lateral ridge. And if that ridge of skin wraps around the eardrum, you got a bullfrog. If that ridge of skin goes down the back, you got a green frog. And obviously the size will tell you a big difference as well. And if you look on their throats, if it's very yellowish and they have very large eardrums, you got a boy bullfrog. This one's definitely a boy. Girl bullfrogs won't have as large of an eardrum. Usually those eardrums are roughly about the same, the same size as the eyes. And I usually say it's that way because boys are better listeners, maybe. So bullfrogs, again, pretty, they get a little more common now. We just started hearing more in the last couple of years here at Barkhausen. They weren't as common for some years. Now they're starting to make a comeback and they're gonna have that big baroom call. You can always listen for it. And if you're curious what happens to them in the winter, they'll hibernate in the bottom of the wetlands like what's behind me. And if you wonder, well, how do they breathe in the bottom of wetland all winter long? Because they have lungs like we do. Well, they can actually absorb enough oxygen through their skin. So, Bubba or Bullfrog, he's very excited here. I think we're going to get him back in his tank. Look forward to Bullfrogs. Listen for him if you're hiking anywhere large, long, or by a large wetland, especially in the west shore of Wisconsin. We hope to enjoy this episode of Barkhouse Nature Bite. Thanks, Jason. All right, so we're going to use our inspiration of the bullfrog to make our own frog projects at home with some recycled materials. And we are going to be making these cardboard frogs with a fly here. It can also be a little game, a little fly catcher game where you try to catch the fly. Woo! Oh, I'm going to have to practice on that. Okay, so what you're going to need is a cardboard tube and you're gonna to want to either paint it green or color it green somehow, maybe with a marker or a crayon. I painted mine ahead of time, and for a little extra fun, I painted the inside pink, if you can see that. Or red maybe would be fun too. Um, you'll also need a glue stick or glue bottle, string or yarn, a marker, a scissors, paper, I am using white paper and green paper that is scrap paper, um, a stapler, and some scotch tape. All right, so let's get to work. So first, what I'm gonna do is take my green tube that I have and add some eyes to it. So I have this scrap paper here. I'm sure you have white paper that's hanging around your house somewhere that has a little bit of extra life left in it so that you don't have to use a brand new piece of paper. And I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna fold it, I fold it in half, see like that. And I'm gonna draw a fairly large 
circle on it, just like so, and cut that out so that I get two circles because I'm cutting both at the same time, both pieces of paper. Okay, and now I have two. Ooh, you see that? <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna draw a circle with my marker, my black marker in the middle of both to give the eyes some life to our frog. Okay, now we are going to glue our eyes right by the mouth of our tube. So I'm gonna take my glue stick and glue them right there. Okay. Boy, it was sure interesting to learn about the bullfrog from Barkhausen, wasn't it? I thought that frog was really cool. Okay. One eye and two eyes. I've never seen a frog that big in the wild. I would sure be excited to see one like that. My boys love seeing frogs when we go on our hikes, but we've never been lucky to see one that big. Okay, there's my frog with his eyes. All right, now we need to give it some legs. So I have some green scrap paper here. <clears throat> Again, I found some that had a little bit of life left in it. Instead of taking a brand new piece of green paper. You could also use white paper and color it green if you don't have green paper. And I'm going to just draw some legs. So again, I'm folding it in half to do two at a time so that they match. Um, frogs, a lot of times have their back legs curved. So I just kind of made a curvy back leg like that. I'm gonna cut it out. And then his front legs I'm gonna make straight. When we're done cutting them out, we're just gonna glue them right to the tube. Okay. Now I've got two, see where they are. There we go. You can see that way better. There we go. And now some straight legs. So I'm gonna take my green piece of paper again, fold it in half, and make two straight legs. I'm making some webbed feet on the ends like that. There we go. And I'm gonna cut that out. <clears throat> All right, almost done here. And there are my two legs. All right, let's glue those on. I'm gonna take these straight ones and glue them towards the front. Looks like he's got his arms straight out like that. See that? Cute. And those curved ones I'm going to put in the back. I'm just going to put some glue and stick them right under the tube like so. See? All right. Now I'm going to press the end of my tube, the back part like this, and fold it kind of like that and take my stapler. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I forgot, forgot a part. I need my string. So I'm going to cut a little string off first. I don't want to forget that step. We want the fly to be coming out of the frog's mouth. Okay. Let's put that string down the tube so that it's coming out the end just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to fold it and staple all the way across the back. I'm gonna have to stand up for this a little bit, get that muscle going. And I wanna make sure that I'm stapling the string into it so that it can't move. 
See, can't move now. All right, and then I can snip the rest of that string off the end. Oop. Scissors doesn't want to cut right now. There we go. Okay, there he is. All right, last but not least, let's give that frog a fly to eat. If you think that that's, a, you know what, I'm looking at this string, I think it's a little long. I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter. You can kind of decide after you've uh, put your string on. Okay, let's go back to that scrap piece of paper and just draw your best fly. I'm going to give mine an oval black body like so and then a little circle head like so and then some wings i'm gonna make the wings with a pattern on it just like that and then let's cut that fly out Just cut right around it the best that you can. And then we have our last step of taping our fly onto the end of the string. So I'm going to take my tape, a little bit of it, I don't need that much, and tape it to the end, right on the back of it, so you can't see. Push it on real good. Okay, and there is my fly. It's coming right out of the frog's mouth. And then it can be a fun decoration or a little puppet, or like I said, you could make it into a game and try to catch the fly into the frog's mouth. Ooh, it might be tricky. You might need some practice, but it'll be a real fun when you actually get it. Oh, it was close that time. All right, well, have fun with your frog. If you make one, please post in the comment section so that we can see what you made. I'll put my little frogs here now. Got a little group of them. <laughs> All right, thanks again so much to Barkhausen for showing us Variable Frog and celebrating our Earth Week with us. Thanks so much again. Play well, learn well, and be well. We'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.